This slide gives an example of how the information flows during the course of a building uh, project and it begins uh, with the definition of the templates at the product guide and ends with the operator selecting replacement equipment uh, during the course of the project. So let's push on this a little bit and show you a few specific examples of how the life cycle uh, information related to structured product data is used during design and construction and operation. The first place it's used is in the production of standard product templates. So for a given type of product, we have a minimum required list of properties. And these are properties that you would find in any kind of specification system that did performance-based specification of products. In addition, there can be differentiating properties that the manufacturer provides, but those aren't going to be in the template. The template's just the minimum set. So here's an example from the product guide, and you can see the URL for the, the product guide. Now this is the original version of the product guide, so if you're coming to this after uh, August 2011, you're going to see a slightly different version, but the idea is basically the same. You identify a specification section format or provide a keyword, and the template for that particular type or uh, types of products uh, will show up there, and you can take a look at what the minimum specification is. Here's an example from the original product guide uh, about light fixtures. So you can see that there's information about the type of light fixture, if it's a point source or directed source, what kind of lamps go in the fixture. You might be interested in finding out uh, information about the, uh, the heating load or the electrical requirement or the reflector efficiency. These are things that are specific to the production of light fixtures. So that, that's a good way to see that, but that's not really a format we can use. So the information is provided in three different formats. The first is the industry foundation class models step physical file format, so-called IFC file. The next version is an IFC XML, so that's an XML version of that IFC file. And the third version is an ACOBI file, which is a spreadsheet version of that original IFC step physical file format. Either of those formats are fine, and the data is completely interoperable with one another, because they're all based on the facility management handover model view definition and the IFC version of that specification. So the next thing is the manufacturers that helped create these product type templates, they can fill out their specific products uh, in these templates and then they have the manufacturer's product templates. And so basically what you have is for every model number, for everything you can buy, you have a separate template. And there's templates for off-the-shelf products, there's temple, templates for assembled products, and there's templates for engineered products. And as of August 2011, where we are with the specification of these templates is we have 1,200 uh, product type templates that include both individual products and assembled sets of products. So manufacturers complete their version of those templates for the products that they sell. Here's an example from a demonstration uh, project that we did with General Electric back in 2009. So in 2009, this technology was available for people to use. And if you went to the Building Information Modeling page on GE's Industrial Solutions and you looked at uh, some of the products there, you'd be able to find a panel board in IFC, IFC XML, you'd be able also to get the cut sheet, the PDF cut sheet. So this is the idea. Manufacturers directly export the data from their product databases into IFC, IFC XML, and Kobe spreadsheets. And they provide it directly along with the kind of human readable information we'd like to see in a nice glossy uh, PDF cut sheets. So we might even consider it to be an IFC cut sheet and a regular PDF cut sheet pretty interesting. And really I think the most interesting piece of it is that this technology has been around for a while. What we're really trying to achieve with the SPY project is to engage companies like General Electric and manufacturing associations uh, like the National Electrical Manufacturing Association and underwriters laboratories 
and the Construction Specification Institute to all get together and work on this project together. Because without that, we're going to be able to continue to have these kinds of technology demonstrations, but not move our industry forward one bit. So, I'll be talking about it a little bit later, but I hope that you'll consider the power of this to change our industry and think about joining our effort. We're only going to look at one more piece of this example, but you can look at it in more detail uh, and engage with the SPY project as appropriate where, wherever you fall in the swim lanes of different participants. But let's take a look at where we are in this example. So we've gotten the product templates for each type of product. We've got the manufacturer filling out those product type templates and we've got some possibly some innovation behind there that allows us to do better searches to find those products. Okay, so now what happens? The designers identify those products in the design, the contractors select based on that information, and suppliers provide the information and also do some of their own selection. So what we have is now the contractors pick the ones that are going to go in the building and that information then becomes part of the facility handover record that gets delivered to the facility operator.